This is the story of Sung Ji Han, a single virgin loser. As Earth was being erased after their final game ended in failure, Marshal San Sung Ji Han managed to resist deletion. When he woke back up, he had regressed back in time. Given a second chance, he swore to himself to stop the fall of Korea and humanity and take flawless vengeance against those that ruined things in his original timeline. And most importantly, lose his virginity and get all the baddies. After the blonde guy landed a sudden punch on Ji Han from behind, a wicked grin stretched across his face as he taunted Ji Han to stay down, promising to shower their seer with love and care. Ji Han whirled around, his expression dark and menacing, demanding to know how the man dared to mention her. Impressed by Ji Han's resilience despite his blow, the man recognized Ji Han as far tougher than he appeared. In a surprising turn, Ji Han struck the blonde guy on the head without warning, only to notice the man's reaction to the blow, remarking, Stone skin? The man grinned, revealing the hardened skin where Ji Han's punch had landed. He acknowledged Ji Han's knowledge, but questioned his lack of surprise. With a forceful blow, the man pushed Ji Han back, questioning his confidence in challenging a level 50 player while being at level 25. He soon observed the intense fight with a grin, while the cameraman diligently captured the unfolding scene. As the man continued his relentless assault on Jihan, Hisu pondered if the man was gaining the upper hand. Charging up for a powerful punch, surrounded by a crackling red lightning aura, the man scolded Jihan for his inflated ego, fueled by others touting him as a rising star. Landing a hard punch on Jihan's face, he pressed Jihan to respond, resorting to calling him a motherfucker. Suddenly the man's face contorted in pain, as Ji Han retaliated with a powerful punch to his chin. Ji Han maintained a cool and composed demeanor as he delivered the punch, executing it with such ease that the man was sent hurtling through the air. The cameraman, along with Hisu, stood in stunned silence, witnessing the sudden manifestation of a crimson hand-like aura seizing the man by his hair, hoisting him aloft. The source of this power was none other than Ji Han, employing his abilities to lift the man who, while suspended, writhed in agony as his hair was tugged, vociferating questions about the inexplicable event. Surrounded by a crimson aura, Jihan spoke, his voice edged with menace, likening the man's bully actions to his appearance. With a piercing gaze, Jihan menacingly threatened to seal his abilities to prevent any recurrence. With a swift motion of Jihan's hand, it appeared as though the man's head was violently severed from his body. The cameraman fled in terror at the gruesome sight, while Hisu stood frozen, her eyes wide with shock, transforming into sheer terror as the man's lifeless form collapsed near her, triggering a piercing scream. Meanwhile, within the confines of the gift room, Sia sat in contemplation, tears streaming down her cheeks. Yet she resolved to cease this sorrowful burden, wiping away her tears. Internally questioning the impact of grieving alone, she sighed, affirming that she should rise. Her uncle awaited. As she made her way towards the exit, she examined her status window with a sorrowful countenance. She glanced at it with a mournful expression, silently acknowledging that despite her status as an active player with an F-ranked gift, it was evident she would likely falter in the Bronze League, succumbing to fear. Reading the description of her gift, labelled as a late bloomer, promising realisation of her potential at a later time, she pondered the laziness behind such an explanation. As the door creaked open, revealing the man's hair floating amid Jihan's crimson aura, Sia, her eyes shut tight, lamented her plight, feeling foolish for devoting herself to prayer only to receive an F-rank gift. Abruptly, she snapped her eyes open upon hearing He Su's scream. A shift in perspective revealed that the man's head hadn't separated from his body, but rather his hair had been detached from his head. Turning to her uncle, Sia inquired about the situation. Ji Han, with a nonchalant expression, simply conveyed that the man deserved his fate. Sia swiftly redirected her attention toward He Su's protests, accusing Ji Han of reducing his brother to such a state. As she touched Bro's head, she questioned if he knew the identity of her grandfather, the president of Taiwan Daily. In response, 
Jihan unleashed a laser-like attack, retorting, So what? Dismissing the significance of her family's prominent media position, he challenged whether she intended to manipulate the press. Sporting a malevolent grin, and with the man's hair slipping from her hand, Sia provocatively questioned if he truly believed she would stop there. She brazenly declared her intent to fabricate and circulate false news, her eyes taking on a demonic glint, her vow to tarnish their reputation, transforming them into the most reviled family globally, capable of making people gag merely upon meeting them. She asserts that truth holds little sway over people's concerns, particularly when public opinion is already tainted due to the Sword King's actions. This turn of events plays into her favor, making it easier for her to disseminate false information. Unfazed, Jihan encourages her to do her utmost, suggesting that leaving Korea remains an option if things take a turn for the worse. In response, her expression turns fearful as she queries, What do you mean? Jihan, flames dancing on his hand, questions her ability to bear the consequences of her current actions. Dismissing his warning as an attempt to appear impressive, Hisu derides him as a lame bastard, attributing their association solely to Battle.net and Yun Sejin. With a swift gesture, Jihan envelops her in flames, asserting that self-reflection is not within her nature. He vows to etch into her the repercussions of her actions should she dare to cross certain boundaries. The blaze consumes the room, drowned out only by Hisu's piercing screams. Later in the parking lot, Jihan and Sia sit inside the car. Concerned, Sia questions the safety of their actions. Though satisfied with seeking retribution against Hisu, she voices her apprehension. Jihan, fastening his seatbelt, inquires about what? She cautions about the dangers of antagonizing Taiwan Daily, the largest media conglomerate in their country. Jihan reassured Sia, expressing his belief that the colossal size of the company would deter any hasty action. He inwardly reasoned that it wouldn't make sense for the media entity to act solely due to the president's granddaughter. Rationally, they wouldn't risk targeting a player who was currently under such intense public scrutiny. Observing her uncle's confidence, Sia marveled inwardly at his assured demeanor, finding it fascinating. Jihan, diverting the conversation, queried about the gift she'd received. Sia's expression shifted to one of melancholy as she confessed to having obtained Late Bloomer, an F-rank gift. Internally unsurprised, Jihan silently acknowledged its predictability. While Jihan accessed his status window, Sia expressed doubts about her potential success as a player. Abruptly, Jihan directed her attention to his status window. Confused by the sudden reveal, Sia questioned if it was indeed his status window. Confirming it, Jihan shared that it was his first time showing it to someone else. Sia was taken aback as she noticed something unusual within his status window. Puzzled, she inquired about the presence of an F-rank gift, despite his evident strength. Jihan calmly directed her to the stats above, revealing martial power and force, which intrigued Sia. She questioned if these were authentic Battle.net stats, to which Jihan explained they were unique stats, their acquisition conditions shrouded in secrecy. Emphasizing that gift rank wasn't everything, Jihan enlightened her about the possibility of attaining unique stats, hinting at her potential. Before delving deeper, he presented her gift, asserting that it would illuminate the path to her journey towards strength. In a brief flashback, China's top player, Jin Yuhua, the former second ranked in the world before Jihan's regression, possessed the same late bloomer gift as Sia. At the time, Jihan couldn't believe it, even witnessing it with his own eyes. The F-ranked gift that had plunged Sia into despair and led to her demise held a hidden secret. Returning to the present, Sia gazed at her late bloomer gift through the item Jihan had given her. With this mysterious item called Hermes Monocle, a remarkable A-rank tool, the Hermes Monocle from Olympus, was a one-time use item capable of revealing the true essence of a gift. Jihan acquired this extraordinary tool after repairing the C-ranked Messenger's Broken Monocle, which he had meticulously crafted a day earlier as Sia's birthday present. 
she discerned the various paths to enhance her F-ranked gift. For instance, she discovered that after participating in 50 Battle.net games, her gift could be upgraded. The game participation requirement increased daily by one, and her natural status growth rate could surge by 100%. Sia was astounded by the prospect of upgrading her gift and its fundamental effects. Jihan, sporting a smile, confirmed that the item performed as expected, clarifying that it was a special birthday present, the transformed Messenger's Broken Monocle. He explained that while the ability to upgrade her rank was surprising, the inherent ability itself was commendable. By enhancing her training effectiveness by 2x, compared to others, once the 100% growth rate kicked in, Sia would acquire rare stats faster. Th then that effect is incredible, right? Sia nervously stammered. Jihan reassured her, affirming the incredibility of the effect and highlighting how it would swiftly help her gain the rare stat he had mentioned before. Upon hearing her uncle's encouraging words, a mix of emotions surged within Sia. Jihan had expressed his belief in her potential to become a top player. However, Jihan was caught off guard by Sia's sudden tears as she questioned the quality of the gift. Despite her doubts, Jihan reassured her with a smile, affirming that it was indeed an excellent gift. Yet inwardly, Jihan couldn't help but wonder about the depth of her anticipation. Sia had faced abandonment from her father, who denied her existence, while others gossiped about her. As more people started talking, Sia must have yearned to rise above it all, not solely as the abandoned daughter of the Sword King, but as a player known as Yun Sia. She likely feared receiving a worthless gift, hoping to overcome the challenges that plagued her past. Suddenly, Jihan employed his powers to float a tissue towards her, acknowledging the hardships she had endured. Encouraging her to let it all out, he gently urged Sia to release her pent-up emotions. Sniffling, Sia replied that crying felt okay. She hardly found time to laugh anymore. Then, in a moment of vulnerability, she confessed to finding Jihan fascinating, as though he held knowledge of the entire future. Nervously chuckling, Jihan attributed it to mere luck. Sia, feeling less anxious now, expressed her hunger. Rising from his seat, Jihan suggested making something to eat. Surprised, Sia exclaimed, Huh? Right now? But Jihan reminded her of his promise to prepare an even tastier meal next time, having lined up quite a spread for her birthday. With a cute expression, Sia responded, Okay. Comment, let him cook if you never want this face to be sad ever again. Meanwhile, Hisu, the witch was screaming, her voice echoing in distress because Jihan had scorched off all her hair, even her eyebrows. In her room, she seethed, hurling curses at Jihan in various derogatory languages. Worried about facing her parents looking like this, she raged, Oh my God! What am I going to say to Mummy and Daddy? Just then, the driver barged in, prompting Hisu to hastily throw on a beanie, scolding the driver for not knocking first. He apologized and handed her the CCTV video she had requested, triggering more frustration before she dismissed him. Unseen, her associate couldn't ignore her attitude, inwardly labeling her a rude bitch. Hisu, resembling a drug dealer, couldn't let this slide. She was determined to find something to screw them over. Suddenly her demeanor shifted, a sly grin forming as she gazed at something. Cute little Sia, she chuckled, eyeing a camera image capturing Sia exiting the gift room. You really can't hide those facial expressions of yours, she remarked, observing Sia's vulnerability, an expression on the verge of tears, perfect for an article. Amused, she laughed, noting, Looks like it's an F rank. Isu felt elated. Sia's unwittingly captured expression was a perfect tool for her to undermine and screw her over. Isu, still lost in her thoughts, is about to learn a lesson. Let's leave her be and catch up with Sparkly, who we've overlooked for a while. Bro was contemplating one-sided love and a broken heart, while Sparkly was back to streaming after a lengthy hiatus. Sharing his recent struggles, Sparkly confessed to feeling hollow and lost, having not been chosen by the person he deeply admired.
In the midst of Sparkly's streaming session, viewers noticed Jihan's stream playing in Sparkly's computer. Chat members suggested Sparkly confess his feelings to Jihan. Sparkly's imagination soared as he declared, The ugly and nasty flame mage and those dirty eagles. He golden light dealt with everyone who bothered Jihan. Although the chat somewhat agreed, one member found the depiction amusing, leading to bouts of laughter. Sparkly then stood up, proclaiming a newfound realization. He believed that he, Golden Light, was destined to become Jihan's manager. His sole wish was for Jihan to acknowledge his message. Meanwhile, in the realm of a zombie game map, a powerful golden beam sliced through a zombie, catching the attention of viewers. It was none other than Jihan, showcasing his remarkable skills while live-streaming. The chat marvelled at his extraordinary gameplay, but wondered about his teammates. It was a common trend among Jihan's teammates to simply spectate, munching on popcorn, knowing that as long as they didn't disrupt him, victory was assured for the team. Blue and yellow electricity crackled beneath Jihan's feet as he executed the nameless divine arts flashing sky thunder steps. With that move, the game concluded, and Jihan claimed the top spot. Among his teammates' banter about the difficulty of munching through all the popcorn, someone suggested a blend of onion and caramel flavours for the next batch. Amidst the chatter, the system announced Jihan's elevation to level 25, granting him access to the silver promotion battles. The chat erupted in disbelief, questioning how Jihan was still in bronze. Urged by another member to ascend to silver, the system mentioned Jihan earning the title Ruler of Bronze for securing the highest win rate in the league, also securing a spot in the global top 100 of the Bronze League. The mention of the upcoming August 25th promotion battles sent shockwaves through the chat. Wait, global top 100? exclaimed one member, while another remarked on the rarity of Korean players reaching such heights. Assuredly, it seemed Jihan's move to silver was all but guaranteed. Global Top 100 means that your Battle.net results were in the Top 100 of the entire world. If those selected for the Top 100 just participate in the promotion battle, they are guaranteed to advance. In addition, their promotion battle has another special aspect, which is that they shall fight until only one is left standing. The promotion is a survival game, and only ends when one person is left rather than half. A stage that determines who shall be placed first, in other words, Fortnite Battle Royale. While Jihan was looking at the top 100 list, he inwardly remarked, As expected, this person also participated in the global top 100 at this time. He muttered, It's been a while, Baron Williams. Jihan had thought he'd meet him sooner than before, but to encounter him this soon was unexpected. However, this was concerning because Jihan had never beaten Baron. He wondered if he would lose. For those who forgot, Baron was Jihan's guildmaster in his previous life in America, and at that time, Baron held the top one ranker position. Creating these videos requires a significant investment of time and effort. Therefore, I would greatly appreciate your support by liking and subscribing to my channel. Your support means the world to me and motivates me to continue producing high-quality content. Thank you for being part of this community.